So there was a question that was asked in the last live stream, which was, Rob, when do you stop dollar cost averaging or DCAing uh, Bitcoin, crypto, and digital assets? And I thought it was a good enough uh, question to actually answer this with a complete video. So to make this as simple as possible, uh, there's really two points when I'm going to stop DCAing. And uh, those are and or, which of course the key risk of the factors of uh, 0.85 is when I'm going to stop dollar cost averaging and or when the pi cycle top, which is the 350 day moving average times two, overruns with the 111 day moving average, which has been pretty accurate the last three blow off tops. And when those two things happen and or, I will stop DCAing. So that's essentially it in a nutshell. But if you wanna go further, let's break it down. I mean, I like I, I think there's a lot of different indicators you can use actually. So like. I use this. This is what I use, like the this risk level for Bitcoin. I, I think there's a lot of different indicators you can use, actually. So, like, I use this. This is what I use, like the this risk level for Bitcoin. Um, and basically, the idea is I just I take some profits as it goes up, yeah. and um, I buy when it's down here. So, um, okay. the last the last time I bought Bitcoin was late 2022. Did not buy any altcoins. It is what it is. <laughs> um, but he admits it, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. admit it. Excellent. Yeah, well, I mean, it goes sort of the idea of like, you know, how do I, I mean, it's hard to sell something that I don't have, right? Um, so, I, but I did buy, I, I did buy Bitcoin and I do have, I, I think there's some case to be made that like, no matter what happens, like it's okay to hold like a, a certain percent in Bitcoin, right? So like you have your, you're like, you're like your HODL stack and then your, your stack that you actually are willing to part with at, at certain times in the attempts to try to, to try to time some of these bubbles. But yeah, so what I do is I buy it below 0.4 risk so when it's below here i will dca into bitcoin let me see okay yeah so when it's below here this 0.4 risk level i will dca into bitcoin and then between 0.4 to 0.6 i don't do a thing i just come on here and talk about crypto with you guys um i don't sell it i'm not buying it i'm just happy you know happy no matter what and the yeah. idea is Try you know to not to not stress so much about what way it actually goes, but to say, hey, if it goes back down here to 0.4 risk, that means I will buy some. But if it goes up here, then that means I will sell some. And so what I do is when it gets into the 0.6 risk band and up, that's where I'm open to at least taking some some profits. And I mean, it's hard to know exactly the extent that the bubble will go. Um, like over here, there, there's several instances where we went to the, um, you know, to the highest wristband, like the 0.9 to one wristband. Uh, yeah. But there's also cases where we topped out in the 0.8 to 0.9 wristband or like 2019, we topped out in the 0.6 to 0.7 wristband, right? So mm -hmm. the problem is that until we go forward from here, you know, a few years, we don't know without the benefit of hindsight where it's going to top out. And so what I do is I, I use, it's called dynamic DCA. Um, so yeah, Ben lays it out. It's all about risk levels. For me, it's a little bit more the Pi cycle top, well, multiple MVRBZ scores, but it really does break it down to the basics and it makes it a lot uh, simpler. So what he was talking about, of course, this is a historic risk level that you can find on his website, link in the description. But what he's talking about per se is the time spent in risk bands. Again, he says anything below 0.4 right here, he will accumulate. And of course, we take a look at this. This is just time that it's been on these, these, these price ranges, which the lower the price goes, the less risk you take. And of course, when you get to this 0 0.0, 0 0.1, or 0 0.1, or 0 0.2, this is when you really want to think about backing up the truck. And he's going here and just saying, well, at this point, you know, I'm not doing anything. From 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, in these two parts, I'm not doing anything. I bought over here. I stop doing anything here. I just kind of sit around, show up on NFA Live. And then I start to consider about selling here, 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 and here, which makes a lot of sense. And if we actually color code that, Ben did a pretty good job. Let's be honest. So if we're taking a look at 0 0.4 and below of when he was accumulating, look at this time. Well, he wasn't around that, that time, but let's just say you were around this time. You were accumulating, the price was 13 bucks. Nine dollars, six dollars, pretty good back then. But let's let's make it reasonable and come over here. 2016, you were accumulating here at 500 bucks, 572, 500, and you had from all the way in 2016, from January to essentially March. That's pretty good. And then just kind of sit back and just think about selling around here. Now you go through 2017, and now you start in 2018. 
This is below 8,000 and you're buying at 8,000, you're buying at 6,000, you're buying at 5,000, at 4,000. And this is looking pretty good. And then of course you hold off at 6,000 in 2019, write it up, write it down. It's a long time, right? But you've done your job. And then you, you go back down to low 0 0.4, you're buying at 7,000, 7,000 again, 6,000, all the way down to 3,800 and off. And again, we go over here. So that's just looking at for when you are actually buying and stopping your dollar cost averaging in that regard. So for me, he was also talking about that dynamic DCA. So to make this very simple, what he, what he was what he was saying was like, as we go lower in the risk bands, and this is, of course, my example, he's talking about around this uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, he would be increasing his buys. So look at this. So let's just say, for my example, at 0 0.7, 0 0.8, I'm going to buy 50 bucks a week because I don't really want to start selling until 0 0.85. That's my my factor. And we go to 60 bucks a week because there's there's less risk because the price is depreciating or going down. 70 bucks a week and then you know whatever you wanted to do. So again, what Ben is saying is like for dynamic DCAing, this is what he did. Like in 2020, when the risk level was 0 0.4, which he wasn't buying at that point. But when it gets to like 0 0.3, Whatever the initial was, he's gonna buy 2x. And then in March 13th of 2020, when I went to the risk level 0 0.13, he put four times the amount that he would usually put in because it's dynamic DCA. Now, as you go the other way, of course you start to sell. And that would look something like this. So for for me, I took a look at this in a in a in an interesting way. If we just take out all of the different uh, risk levels from 0. 5, 9 essentially and below, these are the times you're, you're thinking about selling. What is it you what can you see here? We're talking about tops. We're talking about tops in 2017, in 2013, even a little bit of profits here in 2019, looking pretty good. And then in 2020 to 2021. And that of course can be whatever you think it will actually do. But the question itself was when do I stop DCAing? And we've already talked about that. 0 0.85 and below. And of course, when the pie cycle top hits, that's it for me. I think that'll be the, the, the time to actually get out. Now, here's an exit strategy. Again, you can find this on uh, in the Cryptoverse under the tools. And it'll say exit strategies and uh, go from there. So you got two options here. You can use the current price of Bitcoin, which is 51435 or you can use the projected price. I like doing this one because when I'm taking a look, taking a look at a projected price, I can go over here to the dashboard and just take a look at the risk levels and kind of look in the future. Now, I'm not a big believer in the price predictions, but if we're going at risk levels, a one, which is super duper risky, that means that that would put Bitcoin at 112,000. But for where I want to sell at 0 0.85, that's 85,736. So if we come back here to exit strategies, use projected 113,000. That's for one Bitcoin. That's the one we just took a look at. And if we want to go for the risk bands for beginning, middle, or top, the beginning of the risk band will be 0 0.8. The middle will be 0 0.85. And of course, the top will be like 0 0.89. I'm just going to go for the, for the middle. And I don't want to start selling until 0 0.85. So <laughs> Ben labels this the YOLO. That means that 33%, I would think about selling 33% of my stack and 67% of my stack. Now, me personally, I would probably want to sell a little bit more at the 85 level than opposed to the 95 level. And the reason is because you never know what's actually gonna happen. So when I'm gonna do that. And also one thing I like to make clear, which is this, I'm not here to sell all my Bitcoin. It'll be 80% of my Bitcoin. So roughly if I have, you know, let's say I have 10 Bitcoin, then that means I'm gonna sell eight and I'm gonna hold on for two for my hold bag, because you never know. Bitcoin could become the reserve currency of the world and rock it up to a million per Bitcoin. I would feel kind of foolish if I sold at you know $100,000 and now I'm like, where do my Bitcoin go? So again, for me, that's uh, when I would sell. And then lastly, the question comes into, well, what about altcoins and things like that as far as selling and, and stopping the uh, DCA pattern? It's the same thing uh, as far as like risk levels. We can take a look at that, which are on the site. But you, know, you also want to take a look at this. Like this is, because I was always under the assumption that uh, altcoins would rally after Bitcoin and that would be the time to get out. But if we take a look at uh, the all-time highs for Bitcoin, it was around 15th, 16th of December, 2017 and the last, the previous uh, bull run. And then this is, we're taking a look at Ethereum. 
but Ethereum didn't top out until like roughly a month later, 14th of January, 2018. Then I take a look over here and Ethereum actually topped out around the same time as Bitcoin, around 9th of November, 11th of November, 2021. And if we actually scroll down and take a look at Binance Coin, we can see that, yeah, it was the same thing. 7th of November, 2021, 650. That was the all time high uh, for that cycle. Now, if we go down, let's take a look at Solana and see it topped out at when? Yeah, around the same time, 5th, 6th, 7th of November, 2021. So again, um, as far as like all time highs and selling and all those things, it gets tricky. Just make sure that you have a plan in place and that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one.